Is lineage important in the modern day? Some say no, but biology says yes. In almost every single culture around the world, much emphasis was placed on lineage, which is referring to an individual's line of ancestors and still is important to a certain extent today. Some people around the world are quite proud of their lineage and others not so much, while others say it shouldn't matter at all. Various cultures have different naming customs passed down from generation to generation in order to preserve their lineage, and this may vary by country. For instance, in the Anglo world, traditionally the father would pass on his surname to his children, but in the Spanish-speaking world, both the mother and father pass on their surnames to their children. Some cultures may traditionally only have one given name, while others may have several, but the surname, or family name, is what is generally passed on to cement the lineage of a certain family. The Kennedy, Clinton, Bush, Roosevelt, and Adams families are all examples of political families in the U.S. that have arguably been successful due to the power of their lineages. There is certainly power in a name. Nature thinks so, too. That's why each and every human on the planet has a genetic surname. They're called haplogroups. Haplogroups are genetic markers that are extremely important in the study of history and anthropology because they can show an individual's or collective's simplified genetic past that gives clues to how different populations interacted. I've explained this in a past video, but essentially a woman will pass down her mitochondrial or maternal haplogroup onto all of her children, while a man will only pass down his Y-DNA or paternal haplogroup only to his sons because only males have a Y chromosome. Your maternal haplogroup is passed down from your biological mother to you, and it was passed down to her by her mother, your maternal grandmother, and your grandma's mom, and so on and so on. Since only males have a Y chromosome, if you were male, your father passed his paternal haplogroup to you, passed down by his father and his father before him. Are you starting to see how this mirrors many of the naming customs from around the world? Geneticists who are far more knowledgeable than myself on the subject have been able to map out haplogroup lineages around the world going back tens of thousands of years, which gives massive insight into past human migrations, periods of intermixing, and conquest. For tens of thousands of years, these haplogroups have been spreading across the globe, splintering and diversifying due to genetic mutation between generations, and this paints a very interesting picture. This is a pretty awesome map showing paternal haplogroup distribution around the world, but I think it could use a bit more detail and modernization, so I'll be attempting to remake it to the best of my ability. Let's start with arguably two of the world's oldest paternal haplogroups, haplogroup A and B which branched off around 150 and 100,000 years ago in Africa. And these are distributed mainly among the most ancient gene pools of all of humanity, the Pygmies, Khoisan, and Nilo-Saharan speakers of the continent. And for context, here's what it looks like with modern-day borders. These two haplogroups are present in much smaller amounts throughout Africa, but were formerly dominant throughout sub-equatorial Africa before the migration of the Bantus from West Africa, with whom they had limited intermixing over thousands of years. Niger-Congo speakers actually mostly belong to haplogroup E, specifically EM2, formerly known as E1B or E3A, which has spread out to become dominant in most of Sub-Saharan Africa, including Madagascar, where the population is mixed between Bantus and Austronesians. The descendants from the transatlantic slave trade in the Americas have also carried this haplogroup into the Caribbean, the southern U.S., Central American countries like Belize, Nicaragua, and Panama, as well as in the Guyanas and part of northeast Brazil, which is the country with the largest number of people of full or partial African descent outside of Africa itself. Around 8 to 10 percent of the male population globally belongs to this haplogroup. Another haplogroup belonging to the E branch, EM215, formerly known as E3B, is highly associated with speakers of the Afroasiatic languages in Africa, meaning it is predominant in Ethiopia, Somalia, Eritrea, parts of Sudan and Egypt, and nearly the entirety of the Maghreb, and is also present in the Middle East and Southern Europe, especially in the Balkans, where it reaches rates of around 15-30% to 30 for Greece, Albania, Bulgaria, and Romania. 
Jewish descendants are also heavily associated with EM215 in Europe, which makes sense considering they originated in the southern Levant near Egypt, and it's even been suggested that a certain genocidal 20th century dictator with a funny mustache belonged to this haplogroup, which is truly ironic. Greece has one of the most diversified haplogroup distributions of any area in Europe, which reflects its unique role in ancient European and Middle Eastern civilizations, as Greeks were formerly spread out across the entire Mediterranean, and in the present day, around 20% of Greece's population is descended from Greek refugees from the Ottoman Empire, while around 5% are descended from refugees from the Soviet Union. When it comes to Europe, the oldest haplogroup in the continent is actually haplogroup I, divided between I1 in the north, mostly in Scandinavia, and I2 in the south, mostly in the Balkans and Sardinia. And due to immigration to the Americas, haplogroup I is also found in high numbers in their descendants in the U.S. and Canada, and is also found in northern Russia around Arkhangelsk due to the strong Norse influence on the Pomors, a subgroup of Russians in the far north. This haplogroup actually predates the Indo-European expansion and is believed to have branched off from its closest relative, haplogroup J, around 40,000 years ago. Haplogroup J is divided between two subclades, J1 in the south, primarily in the Arabian Peninsula and parts of North Africa, and J2 in the northern Middle East and parts of the Mediterranean. Outside of Arabia, J1 is especially present in males from Sudan, despite being significantly mixed with Nilo-Saharans and Afroasiatics, possibly due to the mass migration from the Arabian Peninsula into Sudan after the 16th century. J2 is present in smaller numbers in Caucasian ethnic groups like the Chechens, as well as in South and Central Asia, showing previous migrations to these regions. The only other place J is common is in South America due to the large number of descendants from Southern Italy and the Levant. This is where the fun begins, as now we'll be looking at haplogroup R1, which originated in North Central Asia around 20,000 years ago. This haplogroup is widely associated with the spread of Proto-Indo-Europeans from their heartland in the Caspian Basin, with R1b being predominant in most Western European ethnic groups from the Germans, Italians, French, Iberians, and inhabitants of the British Isles. R1a is spread throughout most of Eastern Europe, except for the Balkans, and has a moderate presence in Eastern Germany and Austria, showing the large degree of admixture between Slavic and Germanic peoples in the region, and is quite rare west of the Elbe River, except for a large number descended from Polish migrants near Kern. But when we look at the rest of Eurasia, we can see that R1a spread to areas of southern Central Asia among the Kyrgyz, Uzbek, and Uyghurs, but most notably to South Asia, where it is dominant in much of the Indo-Aryan population of northern India. But what's truly astounding is when you look at the spread of haplogroup R1b, which is scattered throughout the Old World, especially among the Armenians and Bashkirs of Russia, but also among the Chadic-speaking groups in West Africa. But these did not result from European colonization, but rather by previous migrations from the Middle East or Central Asia, where R1b can be found in smaller percentages. R1b was spread by European colonization to the Americas and Oceania, and even in highly mixed Latin American countries like Brazil, R1b remains dominant at over 50% of the population, an even higher percentage than in the United States. And this is believed to be due not only to post-independent European migration, but also due to the initial Portuguese settler population. In the Americas, haplogroup Q is dominant among the vast majority of indigenous peoples, and due to intermixing with Europeans, Africans, and others over the centuries, is present in varying amounts in most Latin American countries today, with the exception of the Caribbean. Haplogroup Q is also scattered throughout North and Central Asia, notably among some Siberian groups like the Tuvans, as well as in Turkmenistan. In Central Asia, haplogroup C has spread to various areas due to the migration of Mongolic and Turkic tribes nearly a thousand years ago, and is now dominant among the Kazakhs, Hazara, Mongols, and various populations in Siberia and the far northeast corner of Eurasia, as well as among some Native Americans in the far north of the Americas, and most shockingly is also dominant among some populations in Oceania, such as the Moluccans, Australian Aborigines, and Polynesians. Let's take a look at the far north of the Eurasian landmass, and this is actually made up mostly of haplogroup N, believed to have split from haplogroup O 30 to 40,000 years ago in Northeast Asia, 
and spread west to various groups in Siberia, the Euro region, northern Russia, Finland, and even the Baltics. Interestingly, haplogroup N is also found in much smaller numbers in southern China and Vietnam, showing its eastern origins. When it comes to haplogroup O, it gets a little confusing as the map shows four subclades. O M119, which originated in southern China and spread through much of insular Southeast Asia due to the expansion of the Austronesians, and is found in its highest numbers among the Taiwanese Aboriginals, the Philippines, Borneo, Sumatra, as well as in Madagascar. OM268 likely originated in southern China or northern Southeast Asia, and this is kind of a weird one because it's really spread out all over the place, with the southern branch being spread by Austroasiatic speakers and hence is common in Vietnam, Cambodia, and the Austroasiatic speakers of eastern India, as well as in insular Southeast Asia due to previous Austroasiatic migrations there in the past, while its northern branch is located primarily in Korea and Japan. Haplogroup OM112 originated in China and is to date most heavily associated with Thai, Hmong, and Sino-Tibetan peoples, but is also spread throughout much of mainland and insular Southeast Asia. Haplogroup H, which was formed around 50,000 years ago, is today present in its highest numbers mainly in the southern and eastern portions of the Indian subcontinent, although it is present in smaller numbers throughout South Asia as well as in scattered pockets throughout Southeast Asia, Southwest Asia, and Central Asia. Because I'm running out of time, here are the other haplogroups that were chosen to be depicted on this map, like T, which is kind of scattered all over the place, L, located mostly in South Asia, D, which is a unique case being spread out among Tibeto-Burman, Japanese, and Andamanese populations, as well as K, M, and S, which are present among the indigenous peoples of the Philippines before the mass Asian migration, like the Aeta, and among Melanesian and Micronesian populations. Here's the finished product, and I must admit, I am kind of curious as to why no one's ever done this before, and it's up to your boy, the internet weirdo with a failing liver. But I think this project turned out pretty well, and does a good job showing the distribution of various haplogroups around the world. Is anyone actually interested in this? I don't know. But I had fun making it and doing the research, so feel free to check the download link in the description to grab the map for yourself and mess around with it. Again, I'm not an expert by any means, and this map doesn't show all paternal haplogroups in the world, of course, and it doesn't quite have as much detail as I would like, but I'll be working hard to improve it in the future as I continue to learn. If you've ever taken a genetic test and know your paternal haplogroup, share your thoughts about my map and how I could improve on it in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. As always, this has been Mason. I'll see you next time.